King. And of course, this is Lucille. I'm not good with this. It's a guy I work with me called Leon Warren. He's fantastic. And so many good guitars, they can. So I do use the sometimes. When I should use it all the time. But to be able to tell my little stories. Seem like I can measure the strokes down, but can't measure them so much coming up. practice as hard at trying to do that as I should have, maybe I would have learned, because I believe you can learn to do anything that you really want or anybody else can do. You can learn some of it anyway, but I never did practice enough trying to do it. Anyhow, when I would hear people play with the slide, you know, it sounds so good to me. And then they have another thing called the Hawaiian style guys have these things that you play in and this thing sounds so good and to top it all off you hear the country musicians that play country music man they can get those steel guitars and it's just like a sword that goes through me hearing them play it so I could never do any of that well I started to sound a little bit like the bottleneck. So I would do this for hours. Now I'm not doing like some people think, some people think it is like that. I never do that. Just a trill, a steady trill of the hand. And then I would hear the guitar to sound like it's singing and so every time I'd sit down and start to play that's what I would do not so much as I think the word pizzicata not not like that but just like a horn or something and the sweetest sounds I ever heard is on the violin I've never heard anything sounds so much like the violin so anyway to make a long story short I would do that all the time and then Finally, I got to the place where I sit down. I can't play now without doing it. But it's still a sound that I heard from then until now. I still haven't found it. Don't know how to find it. Sometimes it seems like I'm getting closer to it. But I think the guitar should tell a story. It's just like me. If I was going to tell you a funny a joke or something, and I keep you in suspense until I get near the point and then let you have it. So it's the same thing I think about the guitar. And that's getting your attention. I'm into the story. Either one is, is 
it's according to what the position, according to what position I'm in at the time, mm-hmm. in which one feels most comfortable. So we're all for it. I'm not always, but when I do get a chance, I usually try to run scale. Just, just a little, I call it noodling, uh, doodling, you know. And just going all over the neck of the guitar like that. Mm-hmm. I don't play a lot of chords like a lot of guitarists does. I mean, I'll run the, the scale or shall we say, um, run the notes of the chord a lot of times, the ones I can think of. But to me, uh, this is not good for students, so remember this. Learn the chords. Learn the notes and the progressions. I didn't do it well, but you can. You can do it well, and that is play it. Um, the scales, play the chords, and um, learn them well. I didn't. Because most times when I get ready to play, people would always say, you know, the ones that I'm working with would say, uh, play the solo, man, play the solo. And like a dunce, I'd go out and do it. So it always put me out front and never let me really work in the rhythm section. So I think my point I'm trying to make work with the rhythm section. <laughs> I don't say don't play some things, you know, because to me, I can amuse myself, man. I could be around and nobody had to talk to me, say anything, or even feed me. If I can hear it. That's sort of like food for me. So I do a lot of that before mm-hmm. the shows. If that what it takes, baby, to pull me through. For example, one of the first things that I learned, and as a blues player, we use it all the time. One, four. in nearly everything you do. But there are some, some blues tunes that a lot of people don't believe, but you you got some that's eight bars. I could never be a good teacher, but that's another style, another way of playing that a lot of people don't know that we blues play, players use that. You do use that for a lot of tunes like, oh, I, I, I'd use a lot of common tones. So, all right, let's say that if we um, in the key of G, Well, uh, well, we know that 
the G still fits into the key of C, right? And if you're going to change, there are several, an E, for example, uh, would work, uh, would work. E is the, uh, what, uh, the third of, uh, of C, right? Mm -hmm. G is the fifth. So you keep going like that, and every, every tone that's in the chord that's being played by others, you can just find one. That's what I'm talking about, cheating. You find whatever note that fits within that, you hold on to that one. And a lot of times people don't know that you really don't know what you're doing. You just... <laughs> but you got it, though. And I can hear pretty good. I can hear pretty good when so somebody's playing. They're in the key of G and they're playing. I might just come up like this. Then when they change... So I'm within that chord, see? In most cases, um, people that don't know that I really don't know, don't know that I'm really just guessing, if you will, if that's a good word. So that's the way I do. But that ain't the good, that ain't the best thing to do. The best thing to do is know the chords. If you know the chords, play it with ease. And there are so many chords that make up songs that sound so beautiful. Half of them I don't even know that they... Most times I fall it from here and here in the ear and the heart of the words. I feel what I'm doing and I hear it. But that's not always good. A person should try to learn to read the music as well. I read, but slowly. If I was going to record with you today and there's a piece you wanted me to play, give me my music today and I may have it ready tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, it's a good thing. Some people say that it's not good, but don't believe them. It would be no way I could tell you to turn to page 35 or 42 or whatever it is and we're going to read this if I didn't know how to read. So you need to know how to read, and if you do that, you'll find then that you can play with other people easily if you learn to read well. But now that don't mean that you don't, you know, some guy maybe started like I did. You by yourself, you practice, and you never ever keep the time properly when you start by yourself without somebody teaching you or showing you. Now, well, yeah, you can keep the beat going. I've always been good with that. But if I'm playing with people, I need to hear the sound of the bass. I need to hear something that gives me a guideline while I'm playing. Mm -hmm. So I would say try to learn all of that so you don't have to have those guidelines. They help, of course. You always need them. But you don't have to have them. You know you've got okay, for example, if I'm, I've gotten so used to doing it, so let's say, nobody loved me but my mother. And she could be jiving too. You know, so don't play no chords. Nobody loved me but my mother. She could be jiving too. So now when I act funny with you, it's all because of the way you do. Clarinet, I can read music better with it than anything else, even the guitar. I read, well, I wouldn't say now because I haven't tried playing for quite some time. I've really been concentrating on the guitar. But when I was 
practice and I could read much faster with the clarinet. And so some of the techniques like run and scale. one thing the clarinet has done, did do for me. Uh, well, one of the things that happens when you've played a long time, I think like I have, you kind of expect certain things. You, you expect the unexpected, if that's a good word. Uh, but a lot of the young players you hear today as well as some of the old ones, but the young players are really, when it comes to progression, they know what they're doing. So I listen. I got none of my young players with me, you know, so they don't know, I don't know, they ask me things, you know. These so and so, oh well, I don't know, so and so try. But they actually know much more than I do, but I've had the experience. I've worked a long time with a lot of people, and um, some of the great, I've eaten did uh, some work with, uh, you know, Kenny Burrell, for example. Um, I've worked some things, uh, been around with Bunny Castle. Some of these great, great musicians, and, and I'm in awe of them, you know, I'm like this inside. They can't see it, but I'm like that. But I learned by listening to them. I also would like to say to anybody that's learning to play, it's good to learn to read, it's good to learn to play with others, but it's also good to try to hear. I believe a lot of the great musicians know what they're going to play before they play it. I don't, but I hear leading up to it. I can hear lead. I'll tell you what, it's all like somebody telling you a story or they're seeing something. And you figure out where they, what their point's going to be before they get there. That's kind of the way it is with playing. I hope that the students or whoever is learning, uh, hope they will get something that makes some sense out of what I'm saying.